so uh, i will now show you all the robotic telescope uh, that robotic telescopes that you have and uh, how you how one can go about using them so uh, as you can see there is an observatory logo over here and if you click on that you can see a list of observatories that you have and as i said in my presentation there are three observatories uh, three robotic telescopes in chile and five robotic telescopes in spain in canary islands in spain and at this point of time uh, the solar telescope so canary 5 is their solar telescope and at this point of time this telescope is working so online means the telescope is working at this point of time it is observing uh, the targets it is observing the objects in the sky and offline means it's, it's not uh, it's not working right now so uh, i have chosen the option i have chosen canary 2 uh, as my telescope and which is a 17 in cdk so it has a dome view and an all sky camera and uh, if we go over over here in the observatory information we can look at the uh, look at few updates so right from what at what time the observatory will open to the current time in canary islands then the sky condition so uh, what what percentage of attenuation is expected or or how much how what percentage of missions out of all the missions are expected to be affected because of the bad weather so it seems 30 percent of the missions uh, will be affected because of bad weather and then we have here the weather, weather conditions so every telescope will work in a suitable condition so uh, one thing one should know is that a telescope for a telescope to give you very good results it should be working in optimum condition so if the weather conditions are above the threshold then it will be very difficult for the telescope to function and give out best results and uh, this is the observatory board so this thing will give you updates about your observing run every night and at, i mean what time the mission began if we are halfway through the missions and all of these things so coming back to the observatory information there are a few things that uh, we can go through over here and uh, you can like as you can see we have the status report which shows the status updates of which observatories in spain were working and how the weather was and which i mean how what uh, how the missions were affected because of weather or uh, if there was any attenuation and how moonlight affected uh, the emissions and all of those things so if you look at the satellite view you can have a look you can you can see the satellite view of the observatories as well and there is a weekly forecast which shows the weather forecast over a period of week and and uh, if you look at a day and night map so it shows what i mean it shows the uh, where the sun and the moon is and the red dots are the location of the observatory so over here as you can see is the observatory in spain and here is the observatory in chile and moonlight will show you at what point of time the moon will rise and will set and how much percentage of moon uh, would be visible to us in the night sky so this is very important because if you are into looking if you want to look at uh, faint objects then you might want to avoid moonlight and if you want to observe moon then you might want to look at what point of time moon is visible so uh, let's go into booking or scheduling our observing run and you have to just go into the queue section over here and then you will be given given few time slots so over here there are few uh, few uh, objects that slu will recommend that you could observe you can observe and um, you can choose which object you want to observe. It could be a nebula, it could be a nebula, and it could be a galaxy. So let's choose a time slot, and I'll show you how you can go about scheduling your observing run. So we have a time slot over here, and so what the scheduler has, what options the scheduler has is it has four sections. So SLU will recommend thousand objects, one thousand objects which are visible at this point of time. And then all you have to do is just choose the category uh, in, under which you want to choose the object you want to observe. So it could be a, it could be planet, it could be comets, it could be moon. So if we just choose planets, um, it seems there are no available missions. So there are no planets which are visible at this point of time. So let's say if we choose open star cluster. So uh, if there, so as we can see, there are missions that are visible. All you have to do, do is scroll down and uh, choose which star cluster you want to observe click on this and then preview the mission and you have to just confirm and book the target the same thing would be done with the help of constellation all you have to do is 
choose the constellation you want to observe and sell as tech Aries. And uh, so uh, as the same thing, no object, at this point of time, this constellation is not visible. So let's choose another constellation, say Andromeda. Um, so it seems objects are visible in this constellation. All you have to do is scroll down and choose. So there is only one object that is visible. Click on it, preview mission, and then you have to just book the target. And what mostly I do is I choose my objects with the help of catalogs. So there are various catalogs which are associated with galaxies, which are associated with star cluster. And all you have to do is choose the catalog you want to observe. And I, let's say there are various options as you can see. You have the Abel Galaxy Cluster, you have the um, Caldwell, you have the IC, you have MCG, you have Messier, and you have a range of catalogs. All you have to do is choose one catalog. So I will say choose IC and type the catalog ID. So I would say type 1245. And all I have to do is check the visibility. So if the object is visible, then it would show you where yes, it is visible. If it is not, it will show you it is not visible at this point of time. Then you have to choose the filter in which you want to observe. So you could take any filter you want. And if you want to know what type of filter uh, they provide, so all you have to do is click click on it and you, could see, you can see the details of the filters. You can see what type of filter response it will be given. And uh, you can go filter by filter and it will be giving a brief overview of the filter response and what sort of images are expected out of it. And uh, let's see, what, what I generally do is I would observe it in 50 seconds exposure in luminescence filter, in a clear filter. So I choose a multi-luminescence 50 second exposure filter and uh, I have to click on preview mission and I have to schedule the mission. So that's something how you can book with the help of um, uh, a catalog by choosing the catalog and then catalog ID. And then all I have to do is click on schedule mission. and um, and that's how I have scheduled, observe, scheduled to observe this object. So there is one more option that you can do is you can observe or you can book a target with the help of providing the coordinates of the object. So you can provide the array and deck of the object and then uh, book the observation slot. So all you have to do is choose the category in which you want to observe. and and once you have done that, you have to type in the coordinates. You can type in the coordinates in the original formats and or you can convert those array and take into degree values and then type in their coordinates. Type the name of the object you want to observe. Then again, check the visibility. If it is visible, then it would give you the same thing. It would give you the filter option or the filter options and then uh, select on preview and then just confirm your mission. And that, that's how you um, schedule your observing run in Sulu. Uh, so once your observing run is completed, uh, all you have to do is go into go into the mission mission sections, and uh, as we can see over here, we can see uh, we can see the status update of the mission. So we have an upcoming mission on twentieth of August, which is at 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 twenty one fifty UTC, and if we want to look at the fits. Uh, So if you want to look at the uh, the photos that you get once your mission is completed, then you have to click on the missions. Okay. You have to refresh the page. And and so once the missions are completed, so I booked the same target a few days back and I got the fit. So all you have to do is click on this download logo and this is where your fits file, would, fits file would be there. So as I was talking about image reduction in my presentation, that once you, when we are using CCD and we have to follow certain step to make your fits images uh, good enough to do some science. So the image reduction is taken care of by SLU. You don't need to worry about reducing your image and all. Uh, SLU will reduce your images before providing you the fits. So that is something which uh, is very helpful. And once you have downloaded the fits, then you can use any of the image scaling softwares or AstroPy to work on it. So that's how you uh, 
would book a target and then work on the fits. So that would be from my part, and I would try, I would try to I would like to take questions and try my level best to answer them. And apologies if I'm not able to answer them. Thank you.